I'm Christine McIntyre, and I'm returning to Tulsa Opera to direct this production of Of Mice and Men. And this will be my fourth show here at Tulsa. I've done Rigoletto and Don Giovanni and Elmer Gantry last year. One of the things I enjoy about coming to Tulsa Opera is that there's always a great group of people assembled. It's a really great cast. This one, I think, is probably the finest cast I've gotten to work with here vocally. Um, Costis Protopapas and I get along very, very well, so we have a good time in rehearsal trying to make great music drama. And one of the things that I really appreciate is the company's commitment to doing new American opera, of which I think of Mice and Men is a really great example. It's based on an important uh, and wonderful uh, American novella by John Steinbeck. It's by the Dean of American Opera Proposers, Carlisle Floyd. And the music itself couldn't be more American in its idiom. It actually sort of warms the heart to listen to it and to work on it. It's exactly the kind of music drama that I really like. Of Mice and Men was uh, published in 1937. Within about a year of the book premiering, uh, Steinbeck turned it into a play because he always had this idea that literature should actually be spoken, that the, the future of literature was on the stage or as drama. So he took the novella and turned it almost word for word into a play and it had a, a great Broadway debut. It ran for 200 performances on Broadway. Um, and then about a year and a half later the first film version was made with uh, Lon Chaney Jr. Um, and it's a wonderful film, black and white, really atmospheric, really captures the feeling of the, the Steinbeck work. And he was heavily involved in, in turning the book into the screenplay that was used. Um, then uh, it was also turned into a film a couple of years ago with Gary Sinise and John Malkovich. So we have a much more modern take on it, but beautifully directed and really well acted, of course, because it's those two great actors. Uh, in the middle of all of that, Carlisle Floyd got permission to turn Of Mice and Men into an opera uh, composed in the late 1960s, early 1970s and premiered in Seattle. So the opera has this wonderful history behind it from, from book to, to stage to, to film. For me, when I was learning the piece and starting to research it, I wanted to know what these people actually looked like because it's based on real experience. Steinbeck himself in the 1920s uh, spent time as a bindle stiff. A bindle is uh, a rolled up blanket and everybody's stuff, that, that bundle that you see uh, migrants carrying on their back, you know, usually with a leather strap. And so a bindle stiff is a guy that's got everything he owns on his back and they were kind of migrant farm laborers. And Steinbeck spent years living amongst these people, working like one of them. So he knew who they were. And the book has lots of really wonderful detail. I wanted to get in touch visually with how that detail might play out on the stage. And we have, fortunately, this amazing source of visual information about these people. San Francisco photographer Dorothea Lang had been hired by the Roosevelt administration to actually photograph the migrant labor camps in California as part of a great social service project. Uh, the idea was that if she could take pictures of the people in the camps, it would make it very much more real to, to Congress and to people in Washington so that they could appropriate money to help alleviate some of the, the uh, the stress of the Great Depression, and especially when all of the Okies then migrated to, to California. She and Steinbeck were really aware of each other's work. They visited all the same camps, and even though they didn't actually work together, a lot of her photographs appeared with his journalism and with his short stories, and a lot of times if you buy a copy of Grapes of Wrath or of Mice and Men, it's one of her photographs that's on the cover. And all of these photographs are part of the Library of Congress, so we have access to almost her entire photographic oeuvre. And not only do we, does this give us kind of a, a view of what these people looked like and maybe how they acted and, and what they felt, but I actually visually reference some of the photographs in the production because it's an amazing chance for me to connect not only to the work of a great American photographer, but to this really rich visual history that we have. So there are two photographs in particular, uh, one that was famous in that it was used in the 1939 film version as well of two guys walking up a road and there's a moment in the interlude between acts uh, one scene one and act one scene two where George and Lenny kind of do the same thing and it will remind people anyone who's seen that photograph of these two guys will kind of recognize that moment and another one with all of these farmhands kind of lined up against a barn with their arms crossed kind of looking at something a slightly challenging 
view that they have. And I've staged a little interlude where they're looking at Curly's wife, and she suddenly feels all of this male attention. And it gives us a little window into her character, but it's also just another nice visual reference to us, to this wonderful body of work that can uh, inform us. Um, we're living in a period where our audience is really visually well educated. We have great television, we have great film, we have, through the internet, access to all of this museum quality uh, visual information. And I think it's really important in the future of opera to take all of that in, to make opera be part of that visual story, that visual conversation. Whoa.